What's up guys, Dan here from Kilowatt Auto. So we are back this week with another full self-driving video. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a stretch of road that I've tested before in the past. But today we're gonna to be using Tesla's latest software, which recently added the recognition of speed limit signs. So we're gonna turn on autopilot on the back road and let the car drive for as long as it can and see how it does today. Before we get started though, if you end up enjoying today's video, make sure you get subscribed and also hit the like button so others have an easier time finding it. I also put a referral link in the description down below. So if you're interested in ordering a Tesla, make sure you use that referral code and that'll get you 1000 free supercharging miles. Also, if you're new to the channel, I have an introduction video down below as well, which you can check out to get a feel for what this channel is all about. But with that said, let's jump right into the footage and see how the car does. So starting off our drive, you can see that I'm still in control as I take the car across the narrow bridge. And then you'll see me activate autopilot as soon as it becomes available. And I know it's available because the grayed out steering wheel will appear on the left side of the display anytime that autopilot can be used. And you can also tell that autopilot is active because the size of the lanes will show up as blue on the display. So at this point, I'm gonna let the car control all driving functions, which include steering, accelerating, and braking. And in today's drive, we're utilizing software version 2020.36.10, and the latest feature that was added was speed limit recognition, which I'll illustrate a little later on in the video. And one thing I recognized right away from the last time we tested autopilot on this road is that the car is driving much more aggressively in terms of its speed. And because of this, I'll grab the wheel uh, when the car takes a curve too fast up ahead. And one of my complaints from the last time we tested the car on the back road driving was that it fluctuates its speed too much, sometimes dropping by over 10 miles per hour when it loses sight of the road. And with this latest update, it seems that the car has actually moved a little bit too far towards the other end of the spectrum, where it's actually taking curves too fast, especially when it does not have a good view of the road ahead. So up ahead is where I'll have to take over for the car, and as the road is inclining and bearing to the left, the car does lose sight of the lane lines, and you'll see that it almost drives into the embankment, so I have to grab the wheel and pull the car back into the lane. And this is just further illustrates my point where the car is definitely taking curves at much higher speeds than it was previously, despite losing sight of the lane lines. Autopilot does a little bit better at this next curve where the road bears to the left. I did decrease the speed down to 35 miles per hour and you can see that it still maintains that speed going through the curve. So up ahead is a good example of how the new speed limit sign recognition system is working. So you can see that the speed limit is currently set at 35 miles per hour. And then as soon as the car sees the speed limit sign on the side of the road reading 40, it updates that speed on the display to 40 miles per hour. have some more decent curves up ahead and the car handles these pretty well. It is going to take the S curves without any issues and it doesn't cross over the line at any point uh, during the upcoming curves. So here again, you can see that the car is maintaining a relatively high speed. So I do have it set at 40 miles per hour. And during this S curve, you will see the car ride up on the center yellow line. It doesn't ever cross over, but it does get very close. So up ahead, there's a pretty significant pothole on the right side of the road. And typically if I'm driving, I'll bear to the left, sometimes crossing the double yellow line to avoid it. Uh, in this case though, because the car is an autopilot, it's gonna drive right through the pothole. And I'm not sure if this is something that's going to be a feature that's added in the future that the car will be able to recognize this and attempt to avoid it. Uh, but again, in this case, the car would have to cross over the double yellow line to do so. So that is why in this case, it is not going to avoid it. This is where autopilot definitely is gonna be challenged a little bit more and where the title of this video, The Impossible Back Road, is gonna make a little bit more sense. So you can see that the lane lines are definitely a little bit fainter. The road is also very narrow and still curving a lot. And up ahead, you'll actually see that parts of the road have collapsed and fallen away, uh, making the road into a one lane road essentially.
So at this first section of the road coming up where the road is collapsed, there is a stop sign that's been placed. And in this case, the car handles this intersection perfectly. It recognizes the stop sign well ahead of time and it slows down and then proceeds through the intersection after I give it the okay that it's safe to do so. The next stop sign is gonna be a bit more challenging for autopilot only because it doesn't have a clear field of view until it's about 200 feet ahead of the stop sign. However, it does recognize the stop sign as soon as it sees it and it slows down at the appropriate stop point. So up ahead, you can see the car is driving too fast and it actually does cross over the double yellow line at this point. It does correct itself and doesn't make me take over. But again, just a further example of the car driving much more aggressively this time around in terms of its speed. Whereas in the last time we were testing this, it would drop its speed significantly any time that it detected a curvature in the road. As the road bears to the right, there is another blind stop sign around the corner here. The car does recognize it and slow down to an appropriate stop. And you can see that the road is fully collapsed on the left side here. So up ahead, I'll turn back around and we'll run this last part of the road to see if the car is able to handle this type of situation. Back road driving in general is much more challenging for autopilot than highway driving due to reduced visibility. And this particular stretch of the road is extremely challenging due to the narrow lanes, the tight curvatures and areas of the road that are collapsed. And full self driving is not yet feature complete. So while testing on this road is definitely impossible for the car to handle on its own, I think the way the car performs does illustrate how powerful Tesla's full self-driving computer is and leaves a lot of potential in the full self-driving rewrite which Tesla is currently working on. So as we approach the end of the road up ahead, you'll see that we come to a T intersection and it almost looks like the car is going to make a right handed turn if you look at the lane in the left portion of the display screen. Uh, so I will press down on the driver's stock to see what the car does. But as you can see, it is going to indicate that I do have to take over. So at this point, we'll go ahead and turn around and see how the car handles the collapsed portions of the road. So this first collapsed portion is definitely the most challenging because the entire lane has basically crumbled away. So the car is gonna recognize the stop sign here. And then something which the car did not do last time is you can actually see the lane trying to correct itself on the left side of the screen. And the car does almost wanna cross over to avoid the cones. But in this case, it doesn't. So after I hit down on the driver's stock to push the car through the intersection, I do have to take over because the car is gonna drive directly into the cones. And then up ahead, you'll see the same type of interaction with the next portion of the road that's fallen away. So you'll see the car stop as it should at the stop sign. And then you'll see the correction on the display screen actually start to plot the path of the car into the oncoming lane. But again, at this point, it does say that autopilot cannot proceed and it wants me to take over. Even after I do tell the car it's okay to drive through, I do have to pull the wheel to the left so it doesn't hit any of the cones. So overall, I think the car performed pretty well on today's test. It did cross the yellow line once, and it also required me to take over in an emergency situation when it looked like it was going to drive off the road. And autopilot is definitely driving more aggressively on back roads and maintaining higher speeds around curves. And this just further emphasizes that anytime you're using autopilot, you must remain highly engaged in what the car is doing and be able to take over at a moment's notice. But I'm also curious to hear what you guys thought of how the car did today. So let me know in the comments down below and also to my fellow Tesla owners out there if you're having similar experience with autopilot on back roads or a different one let me know in the comments down below as well. So this is actually where I'm going to end today's video. If you enjoyed it make sure you hit the like button and also get subscribed if you haven't done so already. I do post a new video every week and with that said I will see you in the next one.